Greetings, and bienvenue, made crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Any horror stories from Texas? Share them down below. Hey, I actually have a bunch from my dad and grandpa written up. All right, so forgive my formatting. I don't really post to 4chan a whole lot. I usually just lurk, X. But since the holidays, I've been able to hear more stories from my dad so I think you all might enjoy it. The first couple are from my grandpa. I had heard stories about my grandpa ever since I was a kid. He was my dad's dad and had experienced a lot in life, and this in turn generated some of the most amazing stories I had heard in my childhood. After the Korean War, he became a law enforcement officer in Lubbock, Texas in the late 50s, being the first Hispanic to be employed in the Texas civil service system there, and then from 1960 to 67 he served as a Texas Border Patrol agent, becoming one of the first of five Hispanics to be employed by that agency, up to that time. He later worked for the U.S. Customs Agency Service and the DIA in the 70s. My dad always told me some amazing stories, and not all of them fit here, and some are not for me to share, but he has two that although did not happen to him, have been told to my dad, who later told them to me, in pretty good detail. So the next two stories take place between 1960 and 1967. My dad's family was living in the southwest Texas town of Eagle Pass, which is a border town that borders the Mexican city of Piedras Negras. My grandpa was doing border patrol work there and in the nearby border towns that are scattered along the Rio Grande River. The Sand Trap Now before I get into this first story, I have to explain what a sand trap is. It's not necessarily a trap, exactly. There are some spots along the Rio Grande that are low enough to cross over without much effort. These areas are patrolled but can't be monitored 24-7 especially back then, so sometimes immigrants passed through without detection. In places where the brush wasn't too thick, they would throw down layers of sand and smooth it out. This allowed them to monitor and count footprints and track who or how many people were crossing the river and into the United States. My grandpa worked the morning shift and arrived at the station to supposedly catch up on paperwork and get some coffee. That's where he found the late-night officer, who I'll refer to as, Mr. L, at the station back from his post earlier than he should have. He was pale and looking very distraught. Grandpa asked Mr. L what his deal was and was told the following story. Mr. L had been hearing rumors of some creepy post out in Del Rio, a town about an hour north of Eagle Pass. Essentially, there was a low point in the river where immigrants would cross and enter private ranch land. Multiple BP agents would be sent to check the sand trap there to see if anything was turning up, but they never got any footprints. They needed someone out there to monitor it more closely, however nobody wanted to stay after dusk. The area was rumored to be unsettling and quite possibly haunted. Mr. L thought that was a crock of shit. My dad describes Mr. L as a very tall man, shaved head, and very tough. The kind of person that doesn't take any bullshit. He decided that he would go out there himself at night and show these other guys that they're just being a bunch of sissies. He drives to the Del Rio station and starts getting ready. A lot of the guys were telling him to not worry about it, they can just check the trap in the morning for footprints, and showed obvious signs of concern but of course he brushed it off and was handed a large ring of keys. The keys were to unlock the multiple ranch gates in the county, as he would be driving deep into the middle of nowhere and through multiple properties. He got in his service vehicle, made sure he had all the supplies he needed, and took off down the old county road and then would later turn off to a gated ranch road. It took him over an hour of passing through multiple gates and driving unkempt dirt roads just to get to the spot. He left in the late afternoon, and by the time he arrived at the post, dusk was just upon him. 
He said the spot was loaded with mesquite, creosote and all sorts of brush. You couldn't walk through the brush unless you had a bush hog tractor clear the place out. There was, however, a small, worn path leading from the river that you could get through just barely. This is where the sand trap was placed, since it served as a choke point for any foot traffic. Of course, the trap is devoid of any footprints so he settles down and waits for nightfall. The night was pretty uneventful. The moon was out and lit up the area in a dim, ethereal light. The air was still and despite being out in the middle of nowhere in Texas, there weren't many of the usual night sounds he was accustomed to. He says he would have fallen asleep but the lack of sound kept him on edge and made him unnecessarily anxious. At around 3 or 4 am, he was getting the feeling that maybe this spot wasn't so bad after all and his anxiety was from him just hearing rumors. Then he heard the faint sound of footsteps. He put out his cigarette and tightened his grip on his .357 Magnum sidearm. The sound of brush being pushed away and footsteps got closer. The moon was lower now and it was very dark, but he could see the silhouettes of three men come into view. They emerged from the brush, but something was off about their appearance. He thought maybe it was the lack of light, but their silhouettes were pitch black. It was dark, but these forms looked like they were darker than night. Their eyes were glowing similar to how a cat's would if you shined a light at their face in the dark. He called out to them but they kept moving, ignoring his commands to freeze. They walk in single file, slowly ambling along the path. He points his vehicle's spotlight at them and feels his blood run cold. The forms look like shadows cast on a wall in a puppet show. He said it looked like someone was walking in front of his spotlight, but the shadows that were cast were disembodied and didn't belong to anything. He stood in awe and fear for probably 45 minutes. The forms were gone and there was no longer any sound coming from the brush. He went down to check the sand trap, and found that it was still smooth, and it was like nobody had ever crossed that area. He suddenly felt dreadful, and as though something was watching him. The feeling wouldn't go away and he started to feel fearful. He got in his vehicle and left. He drove straight to Eagle Pass and since my grandpa came in early, he heard everything from the now shaken Mr. L. My grandpa didn't have a fun time as Mr. L. didn't bother to lock the numerous ranch gates behind him. I wish I could say this is the fun part of the story where my grandpa goes over there to close it for him and see the spot for himself, but he had stuff to do and delivered the keys back to the Del Rio station and let them take care of it. Mr. L never went back to that area, but he stopped making fun of his fellow colleagues' stories. Funnily enough, not much changed about him. He wasn't scared of anything, and was a mean guy all around. But whenever Mr. L retold the story at later times, my dad could tell that it was an event that really shook him. My grandpa continued to hear stories about that remote Del Rio post, but over time he heard less about it as he was given assignments that took him away from that town. He believes it was haunted and people said it was an evil place, and although they never caught anybody in that area in his seven years as a border patrol agent, there surely was something crossing over. This one is another one of my grandpa's border patrol stories it's another one that didn't happen to my grandpa but was told by his colleague as they were exchanging stories one morning at the station. His colleague, who we will call Angus, was another one of those true Texan, no bullshit types. He graduated from Texas A&M University, was a bona fide cowboy, and had worked as a ranch hand for years before coming onto the Texas border patrol. He would patrol ranches and other properties near the border on horseback, and would monitor sand traps and look for anything or anyone suspicious. This one instance took place near Rio Grande City. He was on horseback in the middle of nowhere on a ranch in Star County, Texas. The sun was hot, and he hadn't come across anything or anybody for hours. He was miles away from any service road, much less a county road, and he started to get thirsty. He took a quick break to drink some water and get his horse hydrated, too. 
He wiped the sweat off his brow when maybe 500 feet away, he saw a figure moving across the plains at a decent pace. He took a sip out of his canteen and got his binoculars out. He could see it was an older man, with a cowboy hat riding a horse at a slight trot. Angus closed his canteen and put his binoculars back around his neck. He radioed in the incident and mounted his horse and took off after the person, hoping to intercept him. He started off with his horse at a full gallop, kicking up dust behind him. The area was hilly and he passed a bend and saw that the rider was now further away than he was before. Confused but determined, Angus drove his spurs into the side of his horse to goad it into going faster. They started to gain ground on the other rider. He disappeared around another bend but Angus was close behind. When Angus came around the bend, he saw that the rider was even further away. Angus started to get pissed off. Obviously the guy was fucking with him and he was ready to apprehend him. He gets his horse to go even faster. His hat was barely hanging on, and everything was shaking and starting to come loose from their holsters and bags. He gained on the figure yet again, but after another bend, the figure came even further away. He had never made his horse go this fast. Its grunts were harsh and labored. After each bend, the figure got further and further away, until it finally disappeared. For fear of his horse's safety, he decided to call off the pursuit and radio and that the suspect had got away. He dismounted and gave his horse some water. They had probably traveled about 5 to 10 miles from where they originally spotted the lone horseback rider. He decided to double back. He started to notice that the only tracks were his own. No other tracks but the ones from his horse were found the whole way back. He told everyone on the McAllen horseback unit about it and asked them if they ever experienced anything like it, but not one of them believed him. Said it was just a mirage, or he had heat stroke. Angus assured them that he knew the signs of heat stroke and his limits. He had been a ranch hand for years, after all. He wouldn't have continued if he knew he was not well enough to do so. He let it go for a little while but told my grandpa eventually when he did some work in Eagle Pass. He never seemed scared about it but perplexed. He continued working in that area of Star County but he never experienced anything like that ever again. Alright one last one I guess. This is my dad's UFO story. This story takes place truly in the middle of nowhere in the mid-1970s, when my dad was about 11 or 12. The way my dad described where it happened was, by Alpine, kind of close to Terlingua, which is funny, because those towns are like 80 miles apart. If you get a map of Texas though, and look below Marfa and Alpine, and a little bit above Big Bend National Park, you'll see a vast expanse of nothing which is hundreds of thousands of acres of private ranch lands and just general Texas nothingness. My dad was with his uncle and his cousins, who had a property deep in the middle of nowhere, and they were going to stay for a few days at said property. It was accessible by traveling over 40 miles of dirt road and this meant over two hours of slow, bumpy riding. The day was hot, but beautiful. Not a single cloud in the sky. When they finally got to the small property, they started to unpack the truck and put their belongings inside. My dad's uncle said that they had to climb a hill to get to a well so they could gather water. So they all climbed the hill to where the well was located with their buckets and canteens. My dad was fooling around waiting for his turn, and kicking some rocks around. That's when one of his cousins pointed at the sky. There was a small cloud in the sky, and it was the only cloud in the sky. He said it was small, gray, and very round. Almost a perfect sphere. Everyone stopped what they were doing to watch it. It slowly got smaller and smaller, and then finally disappeared. They thought it had evaporated, and thought it was a cool little weather phenomenon. When my dad took his turn at the well, his cousin shouted that it was back. My dad turned around, and sure enough, it was. It was in the same exact spot and was static in position, but once again, it grew smaller and smaller, then disappeared. 
Then it would reappear. They watched this go on for about 15 minutes. My dad, being as young as he was, thought it was some kind of alien spaceship. His uncle was watching it through his binoculars and handed them to my dad to see. My dad said it didn't look like a cloud, but like a swirling cloud of smoke. It would shrink into itself, then reappear out of thin air. He said he was struck with fear and felt the urge to lay down. He was trembling and didn't know why he felt so nauseous and frightened. His uncle ushered everyone off the hill and back down to the cabin. He felt better after a few minutes, and nothing else like it happened over the weekend. I asked him when I was at his house if maybe it was a smoke cloud or smoke signal, but he explained how there was no column of smoke connected to it and it was too high up to be dust or anything else. They also couldn't figure out why it was just stuck in the sky, in that one spot, shrinking into itself and then reappearing, like a creepy pulsing dance. He went back out there a couple times after that but never experienced anything remotely like that again. There's plenty of stories about that area. The Marfa lights have been debunked, but there are other mysterious happenings that come out of Big Bend, and between Highway 67 and 118. That's all I have for now. Not precisely Texas, but still the border. Dad used to go back and forth to Mexico during the 80s because he had some friends living in Reynosa. Once, one of his friends started telling stories about ghosts in the Rio Grande area west of Reynosa. Friend tells a story about one night where some co-workers and him were chilling after work and saw a woman and some kids disappear into the water. Freaked the fuck out and called Mexican police to report what just happened. Police arrived, they searched the river with no luck and an officer told them it was a pretty common sight, because illegal immigrants used to drown or otherwise die in the desert a lot. Weeks later, friend and his co-workers are listening to music and chilling in the same spot, when they see the same exact woman and her kids go into the river and drown. Dad's friend starts tripping balls, because she looked the same and wore the same clothes. Next day, they tell the story at work and an older supervisor says that the drowned woman is a common sight in that particular area of the river, along with La Llorona and some big ass birds that look like owls but are larger than vultures or eagles. I also have an uncle who says he was chased by a hellhound while driving a pickup truck between La Casita and Sullivan City. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.